So I'm driving up to Mount Pinos, but good old Los Angeles traffic is gonna impede that plan. There's a 45 minute delay because of an accident on the 405. Hopefully I have enough time to set up. Mount Pinos is the tallest peak in Ventura County, located about 30 minutes off of the Lebec exit of the 5 freeway. At under two hours away when there's no traffic, Mount Pinos is an excellent place for residents of Los Angeles to try a hand at stargazing or astrophotography. So I've made it to Mount Pinos and there's actually people here. And I'm looking at a very bright point right now. It's traveling. It's bright enough that even on my phone it's getting it. And the people talking by seem to be suggesting that that might actually be the International Space Station. So it's already a good start. Other than traffic, uh, we're doing very well right now. It's a beautiful clear night. You can already see the belt of the Milky Way. I don't know how much you can even see, but I have to say I love the astrophotography community. I was really frustrated. The plate solving was not working on my Nina. I figured, you know, maybe if I get internet connection, maybe this guy's nice enough to let me get some connection that I'll be able to um, plate solve. And I was, in fact, able to start plate solving. Problem is now, pines are just kind of in the way of some of the um, pictures, so... I'm just trying to uh, get polar aligned now, but I'll be able to start that pretty soon. Alright, I probably look ridiculous under this thing, but I don't want to be bothering the other people out of here with my flashlight, so I'm under the blankets in the car. It is frigid. Even with the jacket, I'm already shaking, so I dutched into the car. I'm waiting for the guiding to settle. Hopefully it works, otherwise I'm just going to avoid the guiding. It's been two or three hours that I've been trying to tinker with everything. Collimation's better now. The stars aren't perfect, but they're better than they were before. I can tell that the light pollution here is basically non-existent. A two-minute subframe came up almost as good as the one hour that it took from Malibu. So I'm really excited once everything gets done and done. I'm going to spend an all-night here. I might not be able to image everything I wanted, but at the very least, I'm going to try to image M13 and 31 So we'll see how that goes. The Nordic base, home for the Mount Pinos Nordic Ski Patrol, sits at an elevation of 8,300 feet, allowing for more transparent skies and for the occasional marine layer to cover the lights of Los Angeles and allowing for some of the darkest skies in the region. Unfortunately, I didn't get the image for nearly as long as I would have hoped. Running Nina off of my laptop is frustratingly power consuming and I wasn't able to find my spare power bank until the following day, but that didn't stop me from taking at least a few images. One of the first targets of the night was M57, the Ring Nebula. I have of course imaged this target before, and was hoping to do a comparison, but a pattern of this night was frustratingly short total integration times. In the case of M57, I only obtained about 20 minutes. Before I drove out, I asked my girlfriend to pick out a few deep sky targets. I wasn't able to get around to as many as I would have liked, but I wanted to work with at least one that she picked. This is a single 2 minute frame of NGC 6992 the Eastern Veil Nebula. It's my first time imaging a supernova remnant, and I was surprised that just two minutes was enough to pick up on the nebulosity. It's a beautiful target that I hope to image in the future with filters. Another annoyance of the night was poor collimation. Newtonian telescopes, like the Quattro 200P I was working with, need collimation, or mirror alignment, done regularly, or your image will have distorted stars and details will be blurred. If you look closely, you'll notice the stars in this image are not perfectly circular. I wasn't able to achieve perfect collimation the entire night. In fact, this was as close to the best that I did achieve. I attempted imaging the Andromeda Galaxy and the Dumbbell Nebula, but tracking issues meant both of those images had to be sacrificed. However, M13 was a great success. I managed about 40 minutes of integration time on it, and following tutorials for processing in Vixen Sight, I was able to get stars resolved down to the core. If I had the patience and skill, I'd probably be able to do even better with this image, but given I've only just started getting serious about astrophotography, I'm very happy with the progress I've made. Sadly, as the seasons change, M13 will dip lower and lower, and I won't be able to continue working on it. But other bright targets that can be imaged from my light polluted backyard will soon take its place. And I hope I'll be able to share images of these new targets with all of you soon. Until then, I shall catch you all next time.